uh, in a way reminds me of the Nixon tapes, uh, thousands of hours of secretly recorded conversations that Nixon thought were exclusively hers, uh, his, that he was not going to get them. Hillary Clinton uh, initially took that position. Uh, I'm not turning this over. There's going to be no cooperation. Now they're cooperating, but uh, this is this has to go on uh, a long, long time, and the answers are probably not going to be pretty. That was Bob Woodward earlier this morning in Morning Joe comparing Hillary Clinton's email service to the Nixon tapes and saying Caddy at the end like he did. This is going to go on a long time and it's not going to be pretty. Maybe that explains the stories this morning about Joe Biden starting to tell his people get out there and get ready. Right, that there are enough problems swirling around Hillary Clinton that at some point is this going to come back to haunt her. Yeah. And is she handling it in the right way? Uh, that's the other question, right, with jokes about Snapchat. I mean, terrible canned jokes about Snapchat, read off an right. auto script. Was that the right way to handle this when the FBI and is investigating? And as Ed said, former DNC chair, she's playing prevent, uh, doing it the wrong way. She should, you said she should have turned over the server at, uh, at the ago. beginning. I mean, they should have known that eventually it was going to happen anyway. But it's interesting, in 08, Joe, when she fell behind, she became a great candidate, yeah. but she just let it, let it loose. She, she talked about what was on her mind and let it loose. And she was a candidate. Yeah, she really was. Well, with us now from Washington, let's bring a national correspondent for the Washington Post, Karen Tumley. Karen, you co-wrote this about Hillary Clinton. Quote, it was supposed to be different this time. After the wounds of 2008, many of them self-inflicted, Hillary Rodham Clinton rebooted for 2016 with a new message new advisors and new energy but two dynamics have crystallized this month suggesting the new hillary is hobbled by old weaknesses once again worried supporters see signs of a bunker mentality in response to bad news about her email server and other controversies and they see a candidate who can seem strangely blinkered to the threat posed by a lesser known challenger and karen we were at an event uh where hillary's people were introducing the team to a lot of uh, the press in a in a sort of small casual setting and a lot of really good people and the word was more access we're not going to be paranoid we're not going into a bunker uh, but that appears to be exactly where Hillary is right now well that's right and of course this was this campaign this time around was supposed to have learned from the mistakes of 2008 it was going to be open it was going to be accessible it was going to be authentic and she also, her advisors vowed that she was not going to be sort of crippled the way she was last time by her own inevitability. Um, we've seen two things happen. One, this, this email uh, controversy has, has brought back all of her old instincts towards secrecy, towards closing things down. I mean, her, her um, speech on Friday night had such echoes of the old vast right-wing conspiracy yeah. to it. When, when, the, when it's the New York Times and now the FBI that have been driving a lot of this investigation. That's right. And um, the, it's, it, that's exactly right. It's, it's impossible to say this is just a partisan witch hunt. She, you know, she was saying that about the Benghazi investigation on the Hill. You cannot say that when the FBI is involved and when the Department of Justice, as we reported on Friday, has assigned the same prosecutor who prosecuted David Petraeus to this case. You know, Karen, we were covering the 2008 campaign together, and you remember the Hillary Clinton press operation then was like the toughest operation to try and deal with. You couldn't get them to reply. They treated the press with disdain, and the whole point was this time around they had learned they were going to be more open, they were going to be more accessible, as you were saying. And this just feels so much like the past again. It feels like that we've got, you know, we're up against a fence, and, and they sense they have sometimes that the world is against them, the world is attacking Hillary unfairly, and so they're going to go into defense. Defensive crouch, and I think this this reflects the candidate herself. This this reflects her worldview. But it's important to realize too, as I was reporting last week, I'm, the sense you get is that the campaign itself is trying to get its arms around what's really going on here. The fact is that the Justice Department 
was involved in this for nearly a month before the Clinton campaign got their first inkling that this was going on. In fact, their first inkling came on the night of July 23rd when the New York Times called them up and said, hey, we've got this story about a Justice Department referral. I am told by people in the campaign that that was the very first moment wow. they wow. even knew this referral was going on and it had been out there for, for weeks. Nicole. Karen, why isn't there anyone in her orbit who can walk in there and say this isn't the 90s, there is no vast right-wing conspiracy to speak of, they're busy fighting amongst themselves for the Republican nomination. Why can't anyone snap her out of this very retro mindset that somehow, you know, a, a Republican boogeyman is to blame? These are all wounds and even Democrats acknowledge that. Well, first of all, she does have enemies. Um, so, but there is, especially once legal, once there is a, a real sort of uh, potential of legal jeopardy, all of her old instincts kick in. It's what we saw in Whitewater when she wouldn't turn over those documents and it ended up with the appointment of an independent counsel who turned out to be Ken Starr and we all know where that ended up. Um, but she's so far away from them. I mean, there is no Ken Starr. There is no Republican investigation. This is Hillary there, Clinton well, versus Hillary Clinton. Well, actually, there is a Republican investigation. And the reason that David Kendall had all of those emails on his thumb drive was that he was arguing, her, David Kendall being her attorney, her who was attorney. also her personal attorney going all the way back to the Whitewater days, um, he said he had to maintain them on that thumb drive because he had to preserve the evidence for the Benghazi investigation. So but, but, but Karen, Trey Gowdy is not Hillary Clinton's political problem. The Washington Post, the New York Times, the FBI, the Justice Department is Hillary Clinton's problem. That, that is her, her political problem right now, and it's her legal problem right now. And again, the fact is nobody knows where this investigation is going. She does keep saying, well, none of the stuff in my server was marked classified. Um, that, we are told, is not the legal standard that people... <laughs> that, that's <laughs> not a legal standard when you were sending the type of emails that she's sending around. Everybody in the Intel community I've spoken to over the past month say it is presumed classified. And it's also not just the emails that she was sending, it's the emails that she was receiving. And yeah. according to our reporting, a number of the emails that are being looked at for, for classified material here are emails that she received, in some cases emails she didn't reply to. So right. there are a number of people in her orbit who are going to be questioned over.